out the box, it's me again, your cheap Edulancy. Before anything, if you haven't subscribed yet, kindly click on the subscribe button and click like if it pleases you. Today, we will feature another segment. Our video discussion is OWS, an oily water separator. It's a piece of equipment specific to the shipping or marine industry. It is used to separate oil and water mixtures into their separate components. What is the working principle operation of oily water separator? Oil water separators are planned explicitly to target oil in view of the gravity distinction among oil and water, taking into account heavier solids to settle to the base while oil ascends to the top. Hence, clean water may be discharged to the sea under the regulations of Marpol, whilst the remaining effluents or other mixtures can be incinerated or discharged in port receiving facilities. This system has also the ability to clean or separate contaminants. Example as follows, suits as byproducts of combustion, cleaning products, including rust or sewage. These are the contaminants of which commonly collected from the bilges, to which are considered harmful to the seas. The components of an oily water separator consist of three main parts. The first stage, which is the separator unit assembly. The second stage is the filter or depends on the design of makers for example, a coalescent filter unit is used. And third component is the controlling unit and monitor consoles. Of course, these designs may differ mechanically through different manufacturers. However, the principles behind to it is the density as mentioned in the definition a while ago. Oil is denser than water. This means that such effluents or mixtures can be removed and separated applying specific gravity. Let me show you a plain schematic diagram to further understand how it works. First stage works in the principle of separation by gravity. The second stage in this model works using a coalescing filter method. The process is procedural and in sequential. In the starting steps, clean seawater is delivered to the first stage of the separator. Vent is kept open to allow air to be poured out. Once all the air is poured out and water is used up, Oil water is then drawn from the bilge holding tank and likewise introduced to the same inlet. This would then apply the principle of gravity and density. Hence, this will be accumulated at the top of the separator. This design method uses waffle flates as the oil tends to stick with it and soon tends to move upwards. At this point, oil accumulated at the top is monitored by a sensor and automatically sends it to the oil tank through the overpour valve. Water that has been separated goes to the second stage via a coalescer filter, which further extract mixture that still is included in the water from the first stage. Again, in the top of the chamber of the second stage, this removes lighter densities and likewise automatically is sent to the oil tank using a capacitance sensor which is also fitted on the first stage. Lastly, the left coalescer filter sends the remaining water where it is directed to the overboard bulb. This flow and samples are monitored by the 15 ppm bilge monitor control sensor. If more than 15 ppm is measured, the control signals the return bulb to open in bilge holding tank and closes the overboard bulb. Hence, the system is now in looping cycle. The overboard bulb may open again when the ppm goes down below 15. Okay, now uh, I'll show you a bit of a simulation and uh, recapitulations. As you can see, we have a simulator here which represents the oil water separator system. We have a clean bilge water tank, you have a dirty bilge water tank here. Of course, uh, uh, in some ships, uh, there is only one uh, bilge holding tank and for the uh, oil separator uh, collections, and then there's uh, one tank for that. But of course, uh, there are of course uh, different ships, and sometimes uh, the configuration might differ. But the same principles, and as you can see here, it's set to auto. So let's just proceed by opening the uh, seawater chest, and let's plus the system. So now we just uh, send this one, and as you can see, the overboard bulb uh, uh, automatically opens, and uh, it goes out to sea. So we just uh, let it uh, plus a uh, while. So the oil water separator and the filter plus the uh, oil ppm uh, detector is in this kind of uh, schematic layout. So let's just uh, close this one and open this uh, uh, dirty bilge water tank and close this one. So now it's taking from the dirty bilge water tank and now it's sending here. 
so at this moment we put in the setting to 12 uh, uh, parts per million but let's just simulate it by uh, lowering this to about uh, say only 1 ppm or even uh, maybe uh, 0 ppm let's just see if this one closes and this one opens because as of now there is still between or below the 15 ppm limit so it's okay so, but I'll put it to 0 and see what happens oh see this one closes and this one opens and it circulates back to the clean builds water tank and it should be open as well so that there's a, a continuous uh, cycle because uh, on and on this will go on until uh, there is no longer uh, clean water uh, that can be uh, withdrawn from the tanks and basically the operation has to stop uh, of course I have to remind you as well that in the new regulations uh, there is a interface that connects to the navigating bridge wherein you cannot start the oil wa oily water separator if they do not put the switch on in the bridge uh, this is basically a uh, safety uh, it's a procedural uh, standard operating procedure as required by the regulation nowadays right